morning, everybody. Welcome to the Human Resources Committee meeting Tuesday, March 15th. It's 9 a.m. and this meeting is being conducted by virtually through Zoom. Um, I believe the recording will be available to those who are interested in following the proceedings of the meeting uh, after the meeting. We will be going into closed session, which at that point the recording will be stopped. And we'll resume uh, after we exit the closed session. Uh, I'll call this meeting to order and ask if there are any declarations of conflict of interest. Seeing none, uh, um, you all have the agenda before you, uh, so I'll ask for approval of the agenda. Uh, the motion reads uh, that the contents of the agenda for the Human Resources Committee meeting March 15th, 2022 be approved as presented. I have a mover and a seconder, please. Deputy Mayor Ross, uh, Councillor Main, uh, comments or questions with respect to the agenda, additions, uh, revisions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you, that carries. Um, approval of the previous minutes. Um, I believe you've all seen those. So the uh, motion is that the minutes of the Human Resources Committee meeting held November 5th, 2021, be adopted as printed and circulated. Uh, Deputy Mayor Ross uh, moves, Councillor Main seconds. <laughs> all in favor? Thank you, that carries. Uh, will you now have a motion to move into closed session? If I could just figure out which mouse runs which computer here, we'd be in great shape. Um, so the motion reads that the committee move into a closed session in accordance with Municipal Act 2001, Section 239, Subsection 2, for the purpose of considering the following subject matter. Subsection 2B, personal matters about an identifiable individual. Subsection 2D, labor relations or employee negotiations, labor relations update. Does anybody see any reason why we should not move into closed session? Seeing no objection, uh, Councillor Main, will you move this? And Deputy Mayor Ross, will you second, please? Thank you. All those in favor? And that carries. Uh, we will now move into closed session. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could uh, pause the recording, please. I'll have a motion. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, welcome back to uh, potential listeners. We've just uh, finished a conversation in closed session about uh, uh, labor relations. And uh, I now have a motion arising from that closed session discussions. Uh, and the motion is, that the Human Resources Committee receive as information the verbal update provided by the Chief Administrative Officer and the Human Resources Manager in closed session regarding the status of labor relations, and that the Human Resources Committee confirm its direction to the Chief Administrative Officer and Human Resources Manager respecting collective bargaining. Um, Deputy Mayor, will you move that, please? And uh, Councilor Main, will you second? Thank, thank you. Any, um, any further comments or questions before I call the question? Seeing none, all in favor. Thank you, that too carries. Move on to item uh, item nine, which is a report section. Uh, 9.1 is recruitment update, and that uh, that will be presented by uh, Ms. Ellery uh, Telford-Gill, uh, talent recruiter, and uh, will provide a recruitment status update to the committee uh, as follows. Not, uh, 22, 2022 COLA for management non-union. Um, That's a separate item. I see. Then I show, <laughs> uh, show oh, uh, Chief Ryan. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chief. Have Thank you for your, your time. Day. Thank you. I just sent a message to um, Ellery to join the meeting. So um, I'm just waiting for her to log in. Thank you, if I may, uh, Mr. Mayor. Please. Yes, um, I just, just want to provide a bit of an update to, on terms of the agenda. Most of the items that remain on the agenda are verbal updates. So um, once Ellery recruit, uh, provides the recruitment update, both uh, Moore and myself will provide those verbal updates on the remaining matters. Thank you. Uh, there, uh, Madam Clerk, there is a motion after 9.2. <laughs> And then 9.3 through 9.5 appear to have a sort of an omnibus motion after we get to the bottom. Am I correct on that? 
Yeah, the motion for the COLA is just that administration be directed to proceed with the recommendations. Right. So it's um, just so we have that on, there's on a record. resolution on record. Sure. Yes. And the 9.5 is just direction to me to set the dates for 2022. So in the past, I just look back at the other minutes and there's always been a motion to that effect. So thank you. Okay, I think Ellery has signed in. Okay, so Ellery has joined. Good morning. Good morning. So I understand uh, you're going to provide a recruitment status update to the committee. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, since January, we've had 33 open recruitments. Um, 13 have been filled, including 11 summer student offers have been accepted. Um, 12 positions are currently wrapping up, and we still have eight that are active. Our accept Executive Director of Corporate Services and Chief Financial Officer posting is closing this week and the applicants are currently under review. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the committee for Ms. Telford Gill? Uh, Mr. CEO. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. And as, as always, when we provide our, our staffing updates, we like to make sure that people are, are aware and in the interest of transparency that we do um, make the comment that all of these recruitments are within the budget. Uh, a number of those recruitments that Ellery referred to are students that we're very looking forward to uh, coming on board, uh, not only to help the town, but to provide them with some work experience, which is so valuable to them. So that's a, a very good, um, good benefit of that. And it also, uh, within that recruitment, there, we still maintain $400,000 of savings that we've included in the budget as part of um, wage gapping, which um, is a commitment by, by the, uh, the town administration uh, to relieving the tax burden. So $400,000 of savings is included in all of the recruitment that we do on an annual basis. Uh, we will probably overachieve that uh, because the market is so competitive and it just takes a long time to bring staff on board. But I don't want people to think that we are hiring a tremendous amount of people over and, aboard, over and above what's normally at the town. This is within the town budget. And as you know, during the budget, we did indicate that the levels of staffing at the town are roughly the same as it was 10 years ago. So I just wanted to provide that context as Ellery gives that uh, update. And I do want to extend our appreciation to Ellery. She is just fantastic at uh, supporting the team and is uh, extremely active in making sure we're on top of the market and uh, being responsive to our applicants. So thank you, Ellery. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for, um, and, and I think it's important that the last tell was probably the significant one. The staffing levels have remained relatively stable for 10 years, uh, which is given a lot of other municipalities, I would say is, is quite a, an achievement. And I think it's also telling that there's uh, a lot more happening that the public doesn't see and responsibilities downloading from the province and so on. And the staff, staff have risen to the occasion and managed that workload. Uh, and st despite uh, uh, within the the uh, complement that's been there over the, consistent over the last ten years, really, it's, it to me is a, a sign of how how well Town Hall is is running despite some technical glitches from time to time. We won't mention parking meters, of course, but. Uh, uh, so thank you, Ms. Telford Gill. That's uh, very encouraging. Uh, good luck with the eight eight outstanding. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, so it looks like the executive director of corporate services closes uh, in a day or two, as well as the chief financial officer. Just curious uh, on the time frame when you think that we can uh, have interviews and get somebody on board and get them up and running. I don't know if that's an unfair question. Thank you. Telford Gill. Thank you. Um, so we are undergoing uh, pre-screen uh, interviews with um, those candidates that have been identified as um, potential um, successful candidates. Um, following that, uh, we will review and do uh, scored pre-screen questionnaires, uh, followed by a, um, a, a 
an interview with a panel. Um, and then if required, we will do um, a second interview. We are hoping we can get someone in as soon as possible. And I am expediting the recruitment process as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Follow you. If I, if I may add to that, uh, Your please, Worship. Please. Yeah, through you to uh, to Councillor Main. Yes, we're, um, we're we're encouraged by the pool that's applied to both of those those positions. Actually, a, a fair number of applicants have come in. Always the as I think we all know, the um, the challenge is to find uh, the fit for for the team and what we're looking for. Finding someone with um, municipal background would be would be ideal. That's not always available uh, with some of the pool out there. Um, and as we mentioned, it is it is quite a competitive environment, so we have to uh, certainly act quickly, and and that is certainly a huge benefit to having someone like Ellery on board. Is you know have someone focused on this who's able to be attentive, as I mentioned, with the applicants, and also helping us out in getting the recruitment process going. So uh, we would like to obviously get these people on board as soon as possible. You know, there's uh, tremendous benefits that I think we all. Um, can see with bringing someone of these, this type of experience on board, and we'll certainly try and close that as soon as possible. I will mention as well, though, if we do not find the right fit, we will not hire. Thank you, Mr. Dodeau. Um, any other questions for Ms. Telford Gill? Don't see any. Thank you very much. Keep up the great work, and uh, good luck with the eight. Thank you. Take care. You too. So next is uh, 9.2, uh, which is the 2022 COLA for management and non-union. Ms. Uh, Doe. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and again, through you to, uh, to the rest of the committee. This is uh, an update. During the, during the budget process, we did, uh, again, in, in terms of transparency, provide this as a budget item. Uh, as you know, we did uh, negotiate an increase with our two major unions, IBEW and, and OPSU, a 1.75% increase for those two unions. And in the budget, we included the same increase for our uh, non-union representatives. So again, a 1.75 increase will be implemented for that small group of employees uh, retroactive to the start of the year. Uh, is there anything I've missed on that, uh, Mara? No, I believe you've covered that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deneau. Comments or questions from the committee? Council Main. Oh, just kind of a general comment. It's going to be a challenge over the next uh, few years as we absorb inflationary costs mm -hmm. and how that reverberates through our collective agreements and our compensation to all um employees that work for the town so it's going to be a challenge to manage obviously we want to pay people you know uh fairly uh compensate them for the, all the hard work it's just going to be a really interesting challenge where we have percentages of inflation that are way above what we've ever been used to in the last 10 15 plus years so uh it's going to be quite the challenge and uh so best of luck to staff trying to figure that out yeah if you uh, may your worship please yeah, no, thank you. That's, um, I mean, that is the world that we all live in. If you're, you know, trying to manage your home budget, if you're trying to manage a business, the inflationary costs, if you look at fuel costs, as an example today, a tremendous amount of pressure on our budget with what's happening with fuel costs. Um, uh, but that's something we need to manage. And the same with any inflationary increases as it comes to bargaining for, for wages. That is something that we'll have to certainly try to be effective in managing. It is one of those reasons why you need to build reserve capacity in any in any organization, whether it's at home putting money away for in your savings account to, to uh, pay for unexpected increases. No different at the town. We need to have money in our reserves to to allow us to address unforeseen um, increases like this and manage through it. Uh, so again, that plays to you know, the very important theme we talked about during the budget process of reinforcing our reserves. And again, one of the reasons why it's so important that we implement a lot of those financial strategies like fee, user fee services. Uh, there's a reason why we have parking systems that were recommended by a third party uh, consultant. You know, we need to increase revenues where we can. We need to look at asset disposition where it makes sense. We need to look at Midland Bay Landing as a potential uh, 
beautiful public prominent space, but also potentially bring in some tax annuities to the town, extremely vital. We cannot service the needs of this town with reserve capacity we have today. That was demonstrated in the budget. Uh, so we need to do that. We think we have a, a plan to do that. Council's made some very difficult decisions in moving forward. And you know, I'm confident we'll be able to manage a lot of those pressures, provided we, we stay on that track. Thank you, Mr. CAO. I understand wheat, uh, sorry, yeah, wheat's up uh, 40% in the last two to three weeks. The 50% uh, of the uh, sunflower oil in the world comes from, guess where, Russia and uh, Ukraine. And of course, pressures on Europe and the world generally on hydrocarbons is through the roof. So as Councillor, as Councillor Main said, good luck with uh, I, I, running a sustainable operation with uh, those kinds of pressures. Uh, um, so, any no, I don't see any further questions with respect to the cola uh, item. So, we have we do have a motion. It's um, the motion is that administration be directed to proceed with the recommendations of the Human Resources Committee respecting 2022 cola for the management non-union employees. Uh, Councillor Main, will you move that, please? And Deputy Mayor Ross, second. Thank you, and uh, all in favor. And that carries, thank you very much. Uh, item 9.3, job evaluation and pay equity project update. Ms. Fent, Mr. CAO, do you want to speak to that, please? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Your Worship. And, uh, and more, has, more has only been, been on board for a couple of weeks, so um, I wanted to, to provide this update and she can certainly uh, chime in as well. It is, uh, the point we wanted to make with the job evaluation and pay equity update was, was really in two items. Uh, certainly, as far as staff is, is concerned, we've, we've made a commitment to do the job evaluation. We tried on two occasions uh, under the previous director. We went out to market to try and find uh, a consultant to help us to do that job evaluation. We were unsuccessful. Uh, again, very competitive market at the time to try and find people to do that kind of work. Um, but it's not lost, certainly on the administration, that we need to do a job evaluation to make sure our people are being paid uh, uh, you know, competitively in those and their jobs uh, descriptions match match the uh, the job evaluation in the marketplace. So we are we are very committed to doing that. Maura knows that's one of uh, you know the most important things she's going to focus on. So she's giving that some thought on on how she will attack that, and we'll be providing further updates um, to the HR committee and council on that as we move forward. But it is a high priority item for us. We wanted to make sure the public understood that and certainly our bargaining units. So that is, uh, you know, certainly on the staff side. The second item that we certainly wanted to make people aware of was as council has directed us, we wanted to make sure we paid attention to council remuneration. So for the new council that's coming in, we wanted to make sure this council had the opportunity to have some information on where the marketplace is and in terms of council remuneration. So that is another item that we will we will address with this council, bring it forward for this council for consideration. So the next council has, uh, you know, has um, the benefits of any decision that will be made uh, in that regard. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Comments or questions from the committee? I have Deputy Mayor Ross and then Councillor Main. Thank you. I just uh, quickly, um, through you, Your Worship, uh, to Mr. Deneau, uh, a few municipalities, and uh, I'm I'm presuming the rumbling is going to start here at some point. But I know Essa and uh, Tiny uh, offered their council members Omers, and uh, they're able to even buy back for the years that uh, they've uh, had on council. Is that something that we any heard any rumblings at this point, or I'm not sure what the Amo is saying about the whole process. But there's definitely it seems to be uh, catching a bit of steam. And I know Tiny just did it. Essa Township ha has had it for years. So um, I'm just concerned that could, you know, stifle if you're now allow past councillors to even buy back their time. It could, you know, be very costly. Mr. C.A.L. Thank you, uh, Your Worship, and uh, through you to, to Deputy Ross. That is, I mean, part of the compensation consideration will be total compensation. So if there is an OMERS aspect to this that needs to be considered, that is something that we would bring forward. Um, buying back pension is something that can be taken by the individual. So that may not be a cost that's borne 
by the town. If, if an individual wants to buy back pension time, that could be a personal decision. If, if there was a, another consideration where, where uh, it was recommended the town do that on behalf of the individual, that would be something separate. But in most cases, I think that's a decision that an individual makes. But it is part of what you know, Mara will look at when we look at what other councils are doing in terms of uh, providing compensation for, for councils. Uh, um, you know, we'll consider all of those things that are being looked at and we'll bring the, the recommendation for the council. Thank you. I mean. Oh, sorry, it was just a comment about uh, living wage stuff. I'll follow it up. It's a, it's a se separate item. It's not related to pay equity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I understand that Tay has completed a process of evaluation, evaluating um, counselor pay uh, pay rate, and and uh, they did that through a, a citizen committee. Tiny is now going through an exercise utilizing a citizen committee with uh, the CAO, and I can't I think I can't remember. There were two two staff people on there. The vote voting was. Uh, as proposed by Tiny, is, is, is three citizen reps uh, selected. I don't know what the selection criteria will be, but um, it strikes me that uh, every time, <laughs> every time budget comes up, somebody wants to volunteer everybody else's compensation to this great unknown equalization situation, which is to me absolute baloney. Um, and I noted that uh, every time that uh, apparently county council convenes at the initiate in the inaugural meeting the clerk stands up and talks about well you're you're so so underpaid that it's uh, you're you're even below people on you know on social assistance and yet nothing happens so i i would like to suggest that if we're going to move forward with this we we actually convene an external review and that it's in the hands of the external reviewer to be reviewers to along with guidance from the CAO and perhaps uh, Ms. Van de Beek to, um, to, to provide guidance in, in looking at, at this and uh, setting up some criteria so we have people on the committee who actually know what the heck they're talking about, not, not just I'll do it sort of thing, volunteers. But um, I, was, I would personally like to see that happen. It seems to, it seems to work fairly well from what I've heard. And it's uh, it's the community saying, well, what how what I hate to say this, how, do they value the work that that uh, counselors do? So I would just put that forward as a suggestion. I don't know how the other counselors feel on the committee, but okay. Um, Thank you, Worship. Well, we'll certainly take that guidance back as we look at that. Um, part of what we'll obviously do is. We want to make sure that the, the decisions are made in the context of what else is happening in the marketplace. So um, that that's always uh, important to make sure that you know we we evaluate that in terms of what other people are doing. Whether you decide you know to to align with what other people are doing is is completely a decision uh, with council, but we want to provide that evidence. So in addition to the the process that will be involved, it will also provide market based evidence. Thank you. So uh, I don't think there are any further questions on this subject. Uh, oh, sorry, I do have one. I forgot. Uh, we were talking about um, pay equity. The library, apparent, if I'm not mistaken, has engaged somebody and they're going through a pay equity exercise, I think. Um, and is that something that will be, so we'll be doing this outside of the process that the library is clearly uh, undertaking? Yeah, through you, your worship, to, to uh, the committee, yes. Um, we've, we've had discussions with uh, the library and Trish about the process and it is, it is very unique job, uh, jobs that they do have there. So they will undertake their, uh, their independent review. Obviously, they have to stay within the budget. You know that's been approved by council, so that's, right. that's certainly part of their consideration. But the, the evaluation will be done very specific for the jobs that are uh, that are in that area. Well, that was my understanding. I, I, when I sat on the um, on the board, uh, I was very surprised to find out that they were using municipal, in other words, the, the municipalities 
pay structure for their, their and not actually looking at other libraries and there was quite a quite a difference or dichotomy between the two as just from a perspective of job function i can't I, I don't know how many people within the municipality can run an interlibrary loan system for example mm -hmm. and i just understand the implications of it so okay thank you for that um hybrid flex work policy mr no again if i may this is again an update um that um Mora has has certainly updated our staff in terms of where where we want to uh, make some potential changes to our our uh, policy around uh, the workplace this is every municipality is looking at this in terms of how do we accommodate virtual work how do we accommodate more flexible work time we've we've had to do that in response to covid so we want to formalize it now as we uh, look at post covid hopefully and and how we manage it's an important element in in, in on a number of, on a number of fronts we're, we we certainly find we're highly effective in allowing more flexibility with with our workforce uh, to allow them to flex their time to accommodate um, you know certainly important elements in their life while still still being able to serve the town is an important aspect to to retaining people attracting people and being highly effective uh, so that is something we certainly need to look at. Um, how we we accommodate people working, uh, whether they're at home or another location, as well as being in the office, is another aspect that we need to formalize from a policy to make sure that they're doing it safely, doing it effectively, and, and certainly um, um, being mindful of, of all the impacts uh, to their life, even while they're working at home. Um, so those policies are being looked at, at quite carefully. Mara is is in contact with her HR colleagues from around uh, Simcoe and Muskoka because we're all looking at those types of policy. I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, harmonization around what those policies will look like, um, but it is something we've committed to our staff that we, we do want to come back with a policy uh, that will probably support hybrid and flex work policies. Uh, and we've asked for their input in that as well. So I just wanted to make the HR committee aware of that uh, to ensure that um, you know that they weren't caught off guard with any policy updates that were being made in that regard. Mara, did you want to add anything? Um, I thank you. I just like to add that the we are surveying the staff currently. It should be going out this week. Um, took us a little bit to finalize to get the survey to work for all aspects of staff. Uh, so we'll be including the feedback from even our outside workers. Um, and our part-time workers just for ideas and, and feedback so that everybody has a voice in what our policy looks like um, as we move that forward. Sorry, you're on mute. That button would be the <laughs> You think after two years, but anyway, thank you. Um, reminds me of that commercial. Uh, anyway, uh, Councilman, sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess if we're going to be asking the staff uh, about their preferences or whatever, are we going to do kind of um, risk assessment? Uh, people have different risk assessments with COVID and coming back to work or whatever. I mean, I certainly miss the office, but I have a different risk profile. I have kids that go to elementary school. My wife's at a preschool. Uh, then say Deputy Mayor Ross, who has uh, young adults who had COVID over the holidays. So he's all good to go. Uh, some of our staff, like as uh, early in the pandemic we're mentioning, they live with people who are immunocompromised. So I'm just trying to figure out the right balance rate because hybrid work system seems to be what we need in these times where people can get back to work and they can be productive, but also stay at home. And it's partially social distancing, but it's also a comfort. Uh, work balance. So um, it just hopefully we put a, we're putting a lot of thought into this. And I think that's very thoughtful. I think that's really important. Um, because I think for me working remotely for two years, I miss town hall, I miss committee meetings and chatting with people in person. But we're trying to find the right balance here on uh, assessing the risk as we go forward as the risk is minimal, but not quite zero yet. So um, thank you for the review of hard work. It looks like Barry is going to have their temporary policy until December and try to see how the next uh, several months go. So I think that's probably the best is uh, give ourselves lots of time to how we figure out and how we transition 
Uh, two years is a long time to develop good routines and also bad habits. So uh, it's going to take a while to break some of these uh, things that we've got used to for the last couple of while. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bain. Uh, I know that uh, there's a bit of a bit of controversy, uh, previous not controversy, but discussion in previous uh, council meetings about this, and uh, that the uh, hybrid or work at home is not as efficient and effective as uh, working in the office. And studies now are showing, in fact, that's not true. Even in highly structured work environments, such as manufacturing, if you're doing, uh, I know in our in our case in our company, we introduced flex workspaces for even in the manufacturing environment, it worked quite well. We cross trained uh, so people understood what the workflow was, what their role in the workflow was, and uh, we actually managed to increase our output almost tenfold. And I'm not I'm not saying that's just because of flex workspace, but it certainly helped. Uh, because people, of course, have other demands, like Councillor Maine with you know, pre uh, preschoolers and young, young, uh, and, you know, elementary schooler uh, kids, and so on. And, and uh, it really helped people to work, even in terms of continuing education. It it helped uh, a lot. So uh, I think it's great that you're pursuing this, as Councillor Maine has said, and uh, it's uh, it's I think it's going to help with recruit with recruitment as well. It's one of those things that will become, I think, a standard part of total compensation. So good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you, if uh, I may, Mr. Mayor. Please. Yeah, just, just two comments. Um, and, and thank you, Councillor Main, for, for your comments on, on that policy. And I did, did want to mention that our vaccination procedure, we are looking at our vaccination procedure uh, at the town for our town staff and we'll certainly um, consider any recommendations we want to make to council for council committees and boards. Uh, we'll be, I'll be attending a meeting with CAOs uh, later today and I'm sure that will be one of the items we talk about how we're approaching those policies and there will be a meeting with Dr. Gardner later this week which uh, again that will be very topical with uh, a number of the changes coming coming in place. So certainly around testing that's in our in our procedure around masking around distancing um, those types of elements we want to make sure that we continue to provide a safe environment for everyone at work uh, flexibility is going to be the key we certainly because some people it's a very personal decision on on a lot of aspects as as councillor main said so we want to make sure we can provide that type of flexibility so people continue to, to feel safe as we hopefully uh get get through the the pandemic um, but we're not through it yet. So, um, you know, we're going to be making those those decisions uh, accordingly and bring any recommendations to council on the vaccination side. In terms of your comments, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, around uh, the flex policy and, and accommodating um, effectiveness, I, I absolutely agree. I think it's a highly effective way to deliver services. Uh, there is the risk of burnout with people who can actually, you know, work too much because the workplace is actually where they live. So we have to be mindful of that, and and that's certainly part of the policy considerations. But it is, I think we all understand that the public sector is a highly competitive, highly, highly competitive environment for talent. It is like the housing market. It is extremely uh, difficult to find uh, people that will fit with the team and retain them. So uh, we're trying to make sure that that we are in step with the marketplace, hence the job evaluation that we're doing, and also the policy updates uh, to provide an effective, um, uh, balanced work work life for uh, for people who work at the town of Midland. But certainly, we're seeing a, a number of people are interested in coming to Midland because of Midland, what Midland has to offer. You know, as a tremendous town, and all the uh, the positive things you know that they're seeing. So we're encouraged by that. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Um, any further comments or questions with respect to this item? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to 9-5, which is the 2022 meeting schedule, which looks like it's a little complicated by a small thing called an election. Uh, who wishes to speak to that? Hi, well, thank you, Your Worship. Through Please. you to count to the councillors. Um, we are proposing future dates to be Friday, May 6th at 9 a.m., June 24th at 9 a.m. July and August will be at the call of the chair due to summer months. 
and reconvening Friday, September 2nd at 9 a.m. And October is to be determined for the election and as is November to be determined uh, depending on current council term ending on November 14th. Thank you. Comments, questions, recommendations, uh, crystal ball gazing, anything like that from the committee? <laughs> Seeing none, uh, we'll, uh, I, I see there's a motion arising from this item. Um, the motion reads that as discussed at the time human, sorry, that as discussed at the Human Resources Committee meeting held March 11th, 2022, the committee approves the 2022 Human Resources Committee meeting schedule and directs administration to post the meeting dates for 2022 on the town's website calendar for the public's information. Uh, Deputy Mayor, will you please move it? Uh, Councilor Main, seconds. Thank you. Uh, so, um, Seeing there's no comments or questions, all those in favor? Thank you, that carries, which takes us to the uh, motion of the day, which is adjournment, uh, that this Human Resources Committee meeting be adjourned at 10.01 a.m. Um, thank you to everybody. Uh, so, oh, I guess I better call a question. Uh, so I'm gonna get a mover and a seconder. Councilor Main, Deputy Mayor Ross, thank you. And all in favor, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. And uh, can I give you a quick phone call, Deputy Mayor?